it's time to hit the streets. Hello and welcome to the Battling Barrow. So we have covered the dungeon, we've extensively covered the dungeon, although there is still more to come. We have started making, uh, exploring the wilderness with some tiles and some cliffs and cave entrances, but now we're going to go a bit urban. We're going to go uh, into the streets and we are going to make some city tiles uh, that are going to be useful for city encounters. One time I want to uh, run the uh, Valk Society and that's a very uh, urban modules and that so these would be great for that and i want to make these as flexible as possible now we've all seen uh dwarven forge terrain uh i mean that is the pinnacle of awesomeness in my opinion but at the same time it comes with a price and that's a price i can't quite afford so i'm using dwarven forge is streets as inspiration for these um they're obviously not going to turn out as good so if you can afford dwarven forge buy those instead but if you like me you can't you might be interested in this uh, we are going to make some tiles as I said inspired by it not directly the same as Dwarven Forge these will be uh, compatible with our wilderness tiles and potentially compatible with uh, all the audio tiles we've made in this channel um, the wilderness the uh, and the cliffs which you can use in conjunction with these uh, so yeah let's let's get crafting take a sheet of one mil chipboard and we are going to divide it up into four it's uh, 12 inches long so into four inch chunks so each sheet of cheap uh, chipboard will give you nine tiles Cut these out with a knife. Going to need two bits of foam, uh, one 10 mil thick, the other six mil thick, and these are two inches wide, both four inches long. Take the uh, two inch bit and measure two half inch rows at the end and cut these out what I need to do on one of the bits is strip off a few mil the edge. I'm just going to use a hot wire cut for this. You can attempt to do this with a knife, but it's long winded and just not worth it. If you've got a whole hot wire cutter, just use that. Next, take the other piece that we haven't shortened, uh, come with a ballpoint pen and draw a little pattern into it, and then give them a texture with the texture roller. Uh, you can use a rock or even rolled up tin foil for this, but I've made the texture order. And then come with a knife and just slice bits out of that bit there just to take away the right angle as much as possible. This middle one gets textured with the cobblestone ruler I made, a roller I made. Uh, this ironically won't be used for the cobblestone road uh, I was never very happy with it but for this for the drainage ditch it's going to be great just to give that loose shingle look that is there I don't know if you can see that what it's giving you so that's the effect next we are going to give this the sidewalk a Paving a bit of texture for this. I'm using a uh, bricks texture roller from um, Green Stuff World. Uh, that is, it's going to be really tricky to do anyway, and it's quite tricky to do on camera. But I'm gonna roll it because you've got to stop it from bending up. So to do that, 
as I'm rolling it, I'm going to put my thumb and finger holding it here and roll it out. And as I said, it's tricky enough to do anyway, but when I'm trying to get it on camera and talk, it makes it even more tricky. And what that will do, it will stop it from bending up so it's nice and flat still. Little tip for you. So we've got the pavement bit. And finally, go back to 6mm foam. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, gutter here, and this is going to be real small bricks. I'm just going to add in. Now I'm going to come in and just draw a cobblestone road into it. I'm going to do it lightly at first, and I'll go over it later on. And that gets a texture in with my text roller, but again, you can use tinfoil or a rock to get a similar effect. It's glue time, so take the uh, square of the chipboard. apply some glue first up the pavement just use the uh, just all lined up and on the edge now for the drainage part of the pavement run a bead of glue against each side here this will help hold it all in place put that in the pavement uh, curb. Now for the road itself, again, a bit of glue along the end here. Put that in. Make sure it's all lined up and in. And just some heavy books on top here will work. Uh, be great just to keep it all together let's work on some curves we want curves out and curves in so luckily a piece of 4x4 6mm and a piece of 4x4 10mm will do two tiles the curve in and the curve out also created a little template which is two inches by two inches and then drawn a curve around uh, the reason for that is because we will trace around it on the 6mm it will chase around it, trace around it on the 10mm and we'll cut these out and swap them around and to cut them out we're going to use a uh, hot wire cutter Trying to stick to that line as much as possible. And take these two bits, and that'll be your curve in, and this here will be your curve out. Um, so two bits of foam will give you two tiles so you're not wasting any foam which is good but really ideally you're probably going to make you more have more of these you need more of these because what you can do is use two of them and form a t-junction four of them to form a crossroads as these are pretty much only good for putting here and have completing the curve so we have two straights as well get there in a minute. Uh, like that. So there we go. So these are good for having the curve here. So you're gonna make use of more of these. So um, so I know what you're thinking now is okay 
Won't I have even amounts of tiles? Yes. Uh, but we can make some more of these later on when we get to do the alley pieces. So when we get to that stage, I'll show you how to make one of these from the leftover alley pieces. But for now, you can make as many of these as you need. I'm going to make four of these and four using this method. All that's left to do now is uh, mark in the uh, lines for the curb and the pavement drainage. And likewise here, I won't show you to that as we've already gone over it and glue it all together and then once you've done that you'll end up with something like this the only thing to take note of is the pattern here is i've made it go horizontal there and horizontal there and join in the middle and same for this little bit here and following the shingles around here just so when it goes up against the tile like so it's horizontal and when it's here it matches up as well so that's it. So then once you glue those together as before, and you've got your curves done. Alleys are made by having two half inch pieces of 10mm, one two inch wide 6mm, and two more half inch 10mm. Uh, what you have here is these will be the curbs, this will be the pavement, no alley gutter here glue that onto some card and you end up with a piece that looks like this still having the gutter on the road bit but now we need to make a bit that is um, that will join this together that is made from another template here so that's one inch two inches and it has a curve in and with that we end up with a piece like this so you have piece here and a piece there that is 10mm and then you use that again to transfer it onto the 6mm to give you a piece like this. We've now got our alley pieces so we've got the uh, street to alley and a straight piece we now need to have a bend for an alley so for that we're going to make another template so this is just made out of card uh, come in an inch here and an inch here an inch here and in each here and this bit will be 10 mil this will be 6 mil and this will be te at 10 mil again we just need to cut that out and transfer that to the uh, proper thickness of foam remember I was talking about how with our uh, out pieces of street tiles uh, normally you'd make these from two bits but we need more of this set than the other well this is where you can utilize that by guess cutting this bit of 10 mil out of this so you can be a bit economical so you can put this here and then you would also have enough room for your 10 mil piece here so you can get a bit economical with your foam usage not as much as making these two individually or you can of course just make eight of these and eight of these but it's up to you for the sewer I'm going to use a piece of six mil thick foam same width as the others so in this case four inches I'm just going to curve it off with the hot wire cutter and then in place I've just marked out how I want the uh, sewer grates to go and I shall cut those out with a hot wire cutter Uh, in the Dawn Forge ones, they have a drain in the top of the path. Uh, there's hinges up, my woe. Um, that's another downside. To do this, I'm just going to come in and cut out. It's a half inch hole. And the way I'm doing this, I've just come, simply just come straight in like that. When you glue it on the top, you're not really going to notice out the pattern. Uh, before we glue it in, I'm going to paint the inside a black just to make it really dark. And now I'll just texture this as normal. For painting, I am going to undercoat them in brown, a burnt umber brown, but I, rather than black. Uh, this is because I want them to have a dirty, dusty look overall. 
and this will help achieve that. Uh, I have mixed some Mod Podge in, so it is like your standard black uh, and paint and Mod Podge, just in this case using brown paint. I am then going to paint the curbs and the road itself in a grey, and it's a a heavy dry brush. The pavement gully is painted in this paint from Code to Arms called Horse Tone Ruin. This is a heavy dry brush just reaching the top of my bits leaving the brown underneath exposed. The pavement itself I'm gonna put I want it to be a red colour rather than grey just to give it a bit bit of character and colour to the proceedings so I'm going to use this Swamp Brown from Nostalgia 88 as it's a nice reddish brick brown type of colour. The road gutter uh, is going to be painted in this old Citadel snake bite leather and it just gets a heavy dry brush over the two layers of bricks. Once all the paint is dry the entire tile gets a nice dry brushing in a tan colour. I am on my board here I'm sort of mixing in some of the still wet snake bite leather just to bring different shades and characters out in the dry brush so sometimes it's just pure cream sometimes it's a brownie cream but I'm doing this over the entire piece including the red bricks once the painting is done we are on to the flocking stage uh, this will be done in two stages sort of doing mud first and then grass and leaf litter second so for the mud what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some glue here in the brown recesses try to ignore the raised areas as much as possible and any gaps where you have cut probably not been quite right go heavy with the, uh, the glue uh, and allow the flock to resolve any issues and for the gutter itself We'll run a bead along here, it necessarily has to be continuous as such. And I'm going to come in using a paintbrush, uh, an old paintbrush that I use for such things. I'm just going to push the glue around more into the lower recesses, really emphasising the cobbly nature of this gully. So and just run it along here and just add splodges of paint here and there along the gutter. I'm going to take some uh, dark brown flocky mix. I believe this is from Woodland Scenics originally. Uh, and just sprinkle that over the pavement gully. Tap off any excess. Take some of this earth mixture, this is uh, Jarvis, and I'm just going to sprinkle this into the gutter. And you can also sprinkle it a bit onto the darker brown mix. You probably want to let this dry more than what I have done here because I literally haven't left it to dry. Because now I'm going to add some more splotches of glue in the gutter, just anywhere you want. No right or wrong reason. Like so, I'm coming with some leaf litter. Uh, I've had this donkey years. I've had this since I used to run the Last Alliance website. And that is, I had to stop running that in 2009. So. So we're just going to put some leaf litter in here, where it's blown in into the gutter. And I'm going to take some static grass. This is a spring mix, I believe, or summer mix. I think this is Richard Citadel's old one. Uh, I believe Jarvis do a similar mix. So I can just use that. Just a nice bright green mix. The excess, dabbing it into the glue spots with. So, and you have this lovely gutter going on there. Really like that. 
and now we just got to do all the others. One last thing to do for this tile, the sewer tile, is to make it great. I'm just going to be making it out of this uh, crochet material, and I'm going to be cutting squares out and gluing them on. Uh, I've pre-painted it black, and I'm just going to paint it now. I want it to be sort of slightly black rusted metal, so I'm going to use a old tin bits or wall plot bronze. Uh, I'm use tin bits, even though it's the same colour. Shake it up. Open it up, uh, it's this sort of rusty tin material. I'm going to get a uh, sponge, dip it in, and then uh, come on and dab it on so it's not quite a nice even coating. I've got this orange here, this is Hobgoblin Orange from um, Nostalgia 88. What I'm going to do is have a little bit on the sponge, and I really don't want much of this. Just to do the oxidation part now. And my dabbings. See that? Let this dry it before we cut out little squares from it. I think that'll do. Not do too much. And when it's dry, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to cut it and eyeball how wide I need it. Like that. Just going to cut a big strip of it. And for this, I'm just going to do super glue. Super glue around the great area. Drop it in. That's the drain tile done. So yeah, are these compatible with uh, my previous tiles? Yes they are. You can use these with the wilderness tiles, you can use these for a cliff face on the edge of the streets if you want that leads down with a cavern into the dungeon. So they're now all compatible with the tiles we've made. So yeah, pleased with these. They look good. Uh, before we have a good look at sort of a table setup, I'd like to take the time to thank my patrons who make terrain videos like this possible to allow me to buy materials. I'd like to thank you all for watching and for the subscribers for subscribing and those who interact with the channel, leaving comments and having a, a conversation. Uh, it makes me feel great to know you, you, you're liking what you see. Uh, but until the next video, guys, stay safe, take care.